a set of things is an idea that you will hear in everyday life, but we want to be quite precise mathematically. So mathematically, a set is this well-defined collection of distinct objects, where we call these objects within a set the elements of that set. It's always important mathematically to be precise with notation, and we usually denote sets with these curly brackets, so not the rounded brackets or the squared off brackets you may see to denote an interval, and we put commas in between the distinct elements of the set. So if I have in words the set of positive integers less than five, I have a set containing open curly bracket one comma two comma three comma four close curly bracket. It has just four things that belong to the set. We do have other ways of writing a set, which is not necessarily listing every element, and this is particularly true for very large sets. But if I look at how I've written it there, I have the set containing all possible x, such that x belongs to z plus, that tells me all of the values in the set are positive integers, and x is less than 5. So this is the set containing all things which satisfy being a positive number, positive integer, less than 5. So it's exactly equivalent to 1, 2, 3 and 4 in a set. Now these examples are numerical, but sets when I defined it at the start, I just said a collection of distinct elements. They can be numbers, they can be words, they can be, in theory, pictures, they can be anything. Because a set is defined just by what distinct elements are in that set, the set one, two, three, and four, is the same as the set 1, 3, 2 and 4. There's no reference to ordering in a set. Also, a set is defined by the number of distinct, so non-repeat elements. So the set 1, 2, 3, 4 is the same as the set 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 4, because they only, both of those two sets only have elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we call the size of a set, the number of distinct elements, so the number of different elements in the set, the cardinality of that set. Now, all of the examples that we've seen so far, the elements of a set have been numerical, but there's no reason why that needs to be. Here in Australia we have six states and two autonomous territories, so I could write a set of those. The set would contain eight elements containing the names of these states and territories. The usual way to denote the cardinality of a set is by these um, parallel vertical lines. So the same sort of notation you may have seen to denote the absolute value of a number. So in our previous example, the set containing one, two, one, three, two, three, and four has cardinality four because there's four distinct elements in that set. I don't count one twice, I don't count two twice, I don't count three twice. I say there's four distinct elements, so the cardinality of the set A is four. And then again, using some of our notation we've seen so far in this subject, we would say that X belongs to a set, and I'd write that as X that belongs to sign A, 
if x is an element of the set A. We say the two sets are equal, which we would write as A equals B. If I'm saying the two sets A and B are equal, if every time and I find an element x in A, I always find that element x in B as well, and the same the other way around. I've got the two-way implication arrow, that, that knowing x is in A implies x is in B, and knowing x is in B implies x is in A for all x. So the two sets contain exactly the same elements. Just as we saw conjunctions of logical statements, we have very similar ideas and, while not identical, similar notation for sets. We define the intersection of two sets A and B as all elements which belong to set A and set B. So instead of having this arrow head pointing up, we have the sort of cup notation, like an upturned cup, A intersection B being all elements X such that X belongs to A and X belongs to B. So although that notation should strictly be read as A intersection B, I will think of it as an AND statement, and very often I will read it out, whether out loud or in my head, as AND rather than intersection. Similarly, we have the union of two sets, A union B, with this cup notation, A union B is all X such that X belongs to A, or X belongs to B, and remember we're talking inclusive or, so potentially both of those. And this notation is very, very similar to what we saw for logical statements. It's a rounded notation rather than the arrowhead, but this idea of the uh, similarity between the um, logical notation and the set notation. And just as we had a not statement in logic, we have the complement of a set. So if I've got a set A, the complement of that, which I will tend to write as A with a superscript C. Some other courses or texts might write A with a bar above it. Both of those mean the complement of a set, and that's just all X such that X is not in A. 